Just firstly, I started off with the situation in Dover when I spoke to the Home Secretary earlier. Uh, we've seen those cues, of course, the CEO of the port saying that one of the issues is that post-Brexit you have to check everyone's passport. Uh, Suella Braverman said that actually I don't think it's fair to say that this is an adverse effect of Brexit. Who's right? Well, actually, I think the problem is that we haven't had a government that has planned for what was going to happen post-Brexit. There are clearly a range of factors that have gone into the delays here, and we've seen them before. But um, the government has known for a very long time that they needed to make sure that there were um, resources in place to deal with additional paperwork checks. The point is not whether we left the European Union or not. The point was that we left with a government that made big promises and once again didn't deliver. And I really feel for the families that are trying to get away for a Easter break, people who've been caught up in this chaos, people whose livelihoods are threatened, it didn't need to be this way. And if the government got a grip, got down to brass tacks and started doing their actual job, all these things could be avoided. Uh, one of the other things uh, that we spoke about in the interview was the new policy to try and in consult on mandatory reporting uh, where people might have a fear that child sexual exploitation is taking place. Now, in the interview, the Home Secretary said that she felt it was one of the biggest scandals that we have seen, in her words, vulnerable white English girls being pursued and raped and drugged and harmed by gangs of British Pakistani men and that people have turned a blind eye due to political correctness. Do you think she's right? Look, I think we, the Home Secretary needs to get real. We're failing young people in this country online, in, on our streets and in their homes because the government is just simply not taking it seriously. 20 years ago, I was working with children who were being groomed by criminal gangs for the Children's Society, trying to help them escape that. There were huge problems with the courts at the time and them having to give evidence in person. There were, there were some delays in the court system that made it difficult for them to get access to justice. We'd called for mandatory reporting for 20 years so that professionals working with children and young people knew that they were under a duty to report on the behaviour of not just other people but of their own colleagues if they suspected that there was a problem. And here here we are after 13 years of Tory government and finally the Home Secretary has just woken up and said let's, let's do something about it and all we've got is a consultation. That is not the mark of a serious government. They must honestly think that we are fools if they think that we're going to fall for this as a sign that the government is taking seriously what is a huge scandal and an absolute disgrace for some of the most vulnerable young people in this country. I think everyone would agree um, about the scandal of these young girls not being listened to, um, appalling. But is she right to talk about the racial profile of some of these uh, gangs when, obviously, grooming gangs sadly happen across all cultures? It's true that they do happen across all cultures. There were, when I was working with children and young people, there were particular issues with... Um, Kurdish and Pakistani gangs in some parts of the country. There are also huge issues with white men grooming young girls online and there are also problems with boys as well. Let's not forget that boys uh, don't escape from these problems. It's just that often what happens is that they go even more unreported and unrecognised than girls. I think the problem with what the Home Secretary is trying to do is that she's trying to single out one particular profile and one particular group. And the risk is that if you do that, you miss the fact that there is child abuse going on in plain sight, in homes, on the streets and online. And we ought to surely be aiming to keep all young people safe from the harm that is created, not just singling out some young people and, and highlighting those forms of abuse and discrimination. This is a government that just hasn't taken that seriously for 13 years. So you'll excuse me if I'm sceptical about a Home Secretary who suddenly pops up with a press release just a few months away, potentially, from a general election. A few months away from a general election? Do you know something that I don't? Well, I mean... When the, whenever the general election comes, we'll be ready for it. But okay. honestly, I mean, if you look at the failure of this government to preside over the huge backlogs in the courts at the moment, she's talking about young people being prevented from being harmed and getting access to justice. But the courts are, have come to a standstill because people can't get through them and they've presided over chaos. The online harms bill has been dragging on through the House of Commons with no sense of urgency. Okay. I would say to the Home Secretary, stop 
stop with the press releases, start rolling up your sleeves and doing your actual job. OK, now Labour is calling on the government to freeze council tax. Um, you are saying that you're going to pay for it through a windfall tax. It feels a little bit like as if the windfall tax is magically solving all of Labour's problems at the minute when we all know that, of course, the amount of money, the amount of revenue you get from a windfall tax fluctuates massively depending on the price of oil and gas, which is already uh, starting uh, to level out. You can't rely on it, can you, as a steady stream of income to fix every possible economic problem that's going to come your way? No, of course not. But we calculate that the windfall tax could raise around £10 billion. The cost That's of freezing council prices, tax right? this year would cost... The, but, but, but right now, if you were to do what we were asking the government to do, to cancel the investment allowances, to raise the level of the windfall tax and to backdate it to when we first called for it, you could raise about £10 billion. Now, if you raised about £10 billion, you could easily use about £2.92 billion of that to freeze council tax this year. I recognise that this is not a long-term solution to the problems that councils face. To do that, we need wholesale transformation of the way that councils and communities are funded in this country. But right now, people's food bills are going up, their housing bills are going up, their energy bills are going up, and they're taxes are about to go up as well because the government is asking councils to put up council tax by 5%. We think that that is just wrong at a time when people are struggling and that we should use some of the money from the profits that big companies are making in order to ease the pain for people this April. I just feel like, I'm talking about the windfall tax because I feel like every interview we end up talking about the windfall tax and I accept it's a popular uh, policy, but it is just one policy that was announced over a year ago. What's the biggest policy that Labour has announced since the windfall tax? Well, I mean, we've announced, for example, that we want 70% of... Um, uh, of people to be able to realise their ambitions of home ownership. We announced that at a conference last year um, through a system of state-backed mortgage insurance and Rachel Reeves and I have been working with the big lenders in order to make that a reality. I think you know, policies like solving the housing crisis, introducing Not breakfast clubs... Not solve the housing or, crisis, um, though, is it? That's an you know, ambition. Well, that's not, that's not just policy, an ambition. It? It's an ambition that we intend to deliver. We'll set ourselves a target in government to do so, and we'll deliver on it. We've said um, just uh, earlier this month that we want to achieve the highest sustained growth in the G7, driven by people in all parts of Britain. And we're working across the board with businesses and council leaders and investors in order to make that a reality. Because we know in the end that windfall tax, a windfall tax will be a fairer way of funding things right now. But none of this can compensate for 13 years of low or no growth in this country. If you want really good public services, if you want choices and chances for our kids in every part of the country, you've got to get the economy growing. And I make no apology for saying that that's why Labour has made that absolutely central to our programme for government.